Hey good people, how y'all doing? Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be giving you all my review on The Real Housewives of Potomac Season 8 Episode 2. Let's jump right into this video. Guys, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. So when the episode opens up, Ashley is with her mother looking for flowers for her new home. Kudos to Ashley for with the help of Michael, of course, doing her own thing, trying to raise her children. So we know that she's having this housewarming party. I think her house is very nice. Um, I'm not really a fan of the decor, but if it works for her, it works for her. But I feel like the one who has the best house for me right now is definitely Robin. The way her house is designed, the way her house is decorated, I love her house the most right now. Anywho, that was just a side note. So in the next scene, we see Karen and Mia meet up. Mia wants to apologize to Karen for spreading those rumors about her cheating on Ray last year. Karen is not one that, Karen is not one at her own mission that is just gonna be like, okay, and move forward. She needs to see that she can trust you. According to her, she takes a long time to forgive. So Mia definitely has an uphill battle with her. Karen won't even shake Mia's hand when they meet. These women are used to, to hugging and embracing. Karen was the one who introduced Mia to the rest of this group. Karen tells Mia, listen girl, what you said about my union. Now you know one thing about Karen, she does not play when it comes to Ray. And she should really put that on a shirt. I don't play when it comes to Ray. She doesn't play those games, okay? She's like, you could have destroyed my relationship. You could have destroyed my marriage. And it's not just about my husband and I. Obviously they have children. And even though they have adult children, it still affects them. Them, it could affect their businesses, whatever. She was not okay with that. Mia understands and does apologize to her, but Karen is like, we're going to keep it. We're going to move forward. This is what she tells Mia, but in her confessional, she's like, yeah, no. <laughs> it's going to take me a little minute to get over this, and I'm sure that Mia might try to do something in the future that's going to upset me as well. So we're going to play this one by ear. One of the things that they also discussed was Mia's relationship with Gordon. And I think I touched on this last week, I'm not 100% sure, but when everything went down with Gordon and his business, Mia questioned whether or not he did something nefarious, which I found to be very interesting because this is your husband. And I felt like I'm married. I would never think twice if something happened to my husband at his job. I would never think that he did something unethical because I know him and I know that that's not a part of his character. So for her to question G and think even for a second that he might have done something wrong is very telling to me. The conspiracy theorist in me believes that Mia is protecting herself. It's aired on TV that she thought maybe he might have done something, but she has no clue what's going on with the business. The way that they first came on the show, her and her husband, the story was that he was kind of winding down with his career and passing everything over to her. So how don't you know what happened within your within the business that you were working for as well? There's a part of me that feels like, girl, maybe you know why he got fired for real, but then there's also a part of me who's like, maybe you don't know all of the ins and outs of everything. You guys let me know what you think. I think Mia is enough of a liar to where I could question that. So Mia is going along with this, I don't drink anymore. She doesn't drink cocktails. She doesn't drink hard liquor. The only thing that she does drink is wine. So she mentioned the fact that she mixed medication and alcohol last year, including that time where she threw the drink in Wendy's face. Did y'all see how Karen responded? Karen was looking like she doesn't know if she could really believe that. And I don't know if I could 100% believe that as well. Like what? I know that Mia went through her health situation, or so she says. I know a lot of people don't buy that. But so it is possible. But it just seems like she's using that as an excuse for her behavior. And I'm not 100% sold on that, Mia. I'm just not. I think what you did is a part of who you are. I really do. I think there's something about Dr. Wendy that rubs her the wrong way. And... I just think that that's who Mia is. Let's move on. So we are now at Candace's house. She meets with her, I believe he's her manager, if I'm not mistaken. And we get to see another part of, of Candace's home that we've never seen, which is her office space. And I have to be honest, I don't know if I'm really feeling the color 
that she has in there. But if she likes it, I love it. You know, it's very different. She needs to get furniture and all of that other stuff. So anyway, they're discussing the fact that her contract with her current record label is almost up and she needs to kind of figure out what she's going to do next. She obviously wants to shop around and find another label to take her on. So her manager is like, you know, we're going to be going back on tour soon. So we're hitting this city and that city. What do you think about having Drew be a show opener for her, for you? And the way that Candace looked, I was really honestly surprised by her reaction. I don't really pay attention to these women outside of the show, but... I thought her and Drew were cool, so I'm just kind of like, what did you, what did she do to you? She explains, which I understand. I think Drew just came to Atlanta and did that one song with her, but Candace sold out Chicago. So she feels like even though Drew is a native of Chicago, being that she sold out Chicago without Drew, she doesn't think that she has a need for her to be there. That was what she said, but she also said something like, that's the only person that you have in mind, which lets me know that maybe she was open to somebody else, just not Drew. Now, I've seen what a lot of people are saying on social media. A lot of people are saying that they would not want somebody to open up for them that could outsing them. <laughs> so people are being a little shady online. They feel like Drew can sing better than Candace. To be quite honest, I don't pay attention to either of these women in their singing careers. I'm happy if they gain success from doing what they love to do, following their passions. But like I said, I was just a little taken aback by Candace's shade towards Drew. And I would love to know what Drew's response would be to seeing this. In the next scene, we're at Robin and Juan's house, or rather Robin's house. I really don't want to talk about these people because it's clear that they're going to drag out. So I feel like we don't need to discuss this anymore. Let's move on. So so we meet the new castmate. Her name is Nika or Neka. I'm not quite sure how you pronounce it. I know Ashley and the rest of the girls were saying Neka, but when they went to Ashley's housewarming party, Wendy was like, this is how you say her name. So I don't really know how to feel about Neka. She's building, not building a house. She has a house that she just brought her and her husband, who's a doctor in Potomac. And they're getting their house together. She's walking around with her contractor and showing us all of the things that she's adding to the house or just the state of the house. You know how these women do. Uh, I just, like I said, I don't know really right now how to feel about ne NECA. I think it's rather interesting that they have someone who is Nigerian like Wendy. And you see during this episode how it seems like people like Giselle, obviously Ashley, and Robin are really gravitating towards her, which... I will say for Giselle, that's really interesting because she's never been one who really gets behind the new girl on the show. We all remember what it was like when Monique came on the show. Giselle felt like Monique was very flashy, very um, always talking about her wealth and stuff like that, which is similar to how NECA is. So the fact that Giselle is just hitting it off right from the jump with her is very interesting to me. But I kind of think it deals with what Candace was accusing these ladies of last year as it relates to colorism. I feel like they might be so gun-ho about her for both for two reasons. One, because of that comment, and two, because of the fact that she and Wendy are both Nigerian, and they don't like Wendy. So they're going to try to make her be like the new and improved Wendy. But I've seen people on social media talk about this is Wendy Jr. This is the great value version of Wendy. I do find those comments to be funny, but I also don't think it's fair to this woman Let's give her her fair shot. I also don't want to see both of them be put against each other because they come from the same place. I feel like they should be supporting one another. All of these women, in my opinion, should support one another, but especially these two. I just don't like the fact that they will be put against each other throughout this season. Speaking of Dr. Wendy, she is going to look at some space so that she can start her talk show. This is a new endeavor that she has. Shout out to her for that. I don't know. I mean, I like Dr. Wendy and she's great, but I'm not so sure about her entrepreneurial skills. I, I feel like she's great at being Dr. Wendy. She's great at being a correspondent on, I believe it's CNN or MSNBC. It's CNN. 
I think she's great at those things, but I don't think, I don't know, maybe she's doing well with her candle line. Y'all let me know, cause I don't know. But I just feel like the fact that she didn't know what a PA was and she made it seem like she did initially and then she didn't. And then she also tried to do that, what was it, library type of thing, restaurant, whatever she was trying to do with Peter Thomas last year. I'm not so sure if she really has that business acumen. I feel like as much money as she's putting out, she can hire someone, you know, share your vision with that person and let them run with it and make it come a reality. That's what I feel like. Y'all let me know what you think. She hired, she's talking to this woman and I honestly forget like what the woman's role is. I don't know if this is going to be like a manager, somebody to help her with this, or is she going to be a producer of the show? I forget. She's known this woman since she was 19 and supposedly she's done some work with Sundance, but Dr. Wendy really doesn't know that to be 100% a fact. So that's another reason why I'm like, Dr. Wendy girl, hire you somebody who knows what they're doing, okay? And you just tell them what you want and let them do it. That space that they were at, it was beautiful. And I would think that if it was soundproof, maybe she would have gone with that, but I really liked the vibe of that place. I honestly did. Karen, Giselle, Ashley, was it Ashley? Yes. Karen, Giselle, Ashley, and Mia get together. They're doing a Pilates class. And what came out of this whole thing was the fact that Karen will apologize, perhaps, to Robin because Karen is sharing with Giselle that her and Mia are working on their relationship based upon what Mia did to her last year. So Giselle is kind of saying, well, you did the same thing to Robin, so will you be apologizing to Robin? And Karen kind of agrees to do so, but she also says that Robin owes her an apology. So we'll see what happens with that. So it's now Ashley's housewarming party. Everything looks really nice. When the ladies all arrive, we notice it's evident that Karen and Sharice are dressed very similar. And they showed the flashback of last year where they were dressed in similar fashions as well. I know that that ate Karen up, that Sharice came out there with that suit and short set on. I know that bothered her. But anywho, I thought it was funny. I really did. I also thought it was funny that when Wendy came, she kind of matrixed her way past Giselle and Mia when she came to say hello to Ashley and Karen. I thought that was a good kiki like girl. <laughs> I don't have time for either one of you. She says in her confessional that the days of her being civil with these women are over. I said I know that's right Dr. Wendy. I'm glad. I am glad about it. So production is kind of making a little big deal about the fact that this is Robin's first time being amongst most of the women in the group. Mind you Candace is not there. I don't know how that whole thing is going to go down as far as what Dr. Wendy and Karen might say to her. But you could see like there's something going on between Giselle and Robin. Something is brewing. This whole Juan situation might be one of the biggest things that they have a conflict in as far as their friendship is concerned. I could easily see that being the case. Ashley also invites Deborah, and I honestly thought that we had seen enough of Deborah last year with her lying self that we did not need to see her her face again on our on our TV screens. I just don't understand why she's there. I know that she's Ashley's friend and this is Ashley's party, but why would you bring her around Wendy knowing that she told that lie on Eddie last year? Every season I want to like Ashley, but it's like every season she gives me a reason not to like her. And this is just another example of that. So she takes Wendy to the side so that they can have a little conversation. And Wendy expresses to her that she really wants to have a relationship and be like, you know, you're my girl. But she doesn't know if she can trust Ashley. She gives it to her straight by saying, I don't want you to stab me in the back. So Wendy is really laying everything on the table as far as what her expectations are with her relationship with Ashley. And Ashley is saying, you know, well, if we get to hang out with each other, then you'll see that I'm not maybe what you have painted in your mind. And we can start to establish a relationship where, we, you know, we really have that good bond and all of those things. Um, I found Wendy. I would not trust Ashley at all. Ashley's track record is horrible. 
She is messy. And I think that we see that when she's talking to Dr. Wendy about NECA, making it seem like NECA is the one that's saying that Wendy's family, I think it's like Omu or something like Umu or something like that. That's like a shameful thing in their culture. And Ashley's trying to make it seem like NECA brought that whole thing up to Ashley when it was Ashley who brought it up to NECA and NECA really did not have anything negative to say about Wendy. She just really said that she had met Wendy at least one time. I think she said that she met her and they had a little conversation and that was it. Like they're not friends or anything like that. I want to say that I don't know why Ashley would do this, but it's Ashley. This is what she does. So of course this makes Dr. Wendy feel like girl as a fellow Nigerian, this is what she's saying in her confessional, I would think that we would be cool, that we as Nigerians would not do that to each other. But um, the way that Ashley is framing it is just not right. And I think that this sets the tone as far as Dr. Wendy is concerned with her relationship with NECA. You guys drop some comments down below and let me know what you thought about this episode and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.